Welcome to the overview video for chapter nine, Sacred Music in the Era of the Reformation. Our learning objectives are, number one, to describe attitudes toward the uses of music in Protestant churches in the 16th century and to describe the genres they used. Number two, to identify some of the most important composers and terms associated with these trends. Number three, to describe music for the Catholic Church in the generation prior to the Counter-Reformation. Number four, to recount the effect of the Counter-Reformation on 16th century Catholic music and identify some of the most important composers and terms associated with it. And number five, to describe the styles of Palestrina, Victoria, De Lassus, and Bird. The Reformation shattered the religious unity of Central and Western Europe. It brought new types of religious music, including chorale and chorale settings in the Lutheran Church, the metrical psalm in Calvinist churches, and the anthem and service in the Anglican Church, while Catholic and Jewish music held to past traditions. Martin Luther, 1483 to 1546, was a professor of biblical theology whose arguments that God offers salvation through faith alone and that religious authority derived from the Bible alone posed a challenge to the authority of the Catholic Church. Luther sought to give people a larger role in worship by using the vernacular. He gave music a central position in the Lutheran Church, and he wanted the entire congregation to participate in the services. The Deutsch Messe, German Mass, 1526, was Lutheran's German version of the Mass Liturgy. The most important form of music in the Lutheran Church was the Congregational Hymn or Chorale, a metric, rhymed, strophic poem and melody in simple rhythm sung in unison by the congregation without harmonization or accompaniment. The four main sources for chorales were 1. Adaptations of chant, 2. Existing German devotional songs, 3. Secular tunes given new words, a practice called contrafactum, and 4. New melodies. The adaptations of chant changed the melody to an appealing style that was easier for lay worshipers to sing. Luther and others wrote many new tunes for chorales. The best known is Luther's Einfest Berg. Composers used a variety of compositional approaches to write polyphonic settings or chorales from the home, for schools, and for performance by choirs in church. Chorale motets borrowed techniques from the Franco-Flemish motets such as cantus firmus or paraphrase technique. Settings with the chorale and the top voice accompanied by block chords became common in the late 16th century, and after 1600 it was customary for the organ to play all the parts while the congregation sang the tune. In France, Switzerland, and the Low Countries, Jean Calvin, 1509 to 1564 led a Protestant movement that rejected papal authority and accepted predestination. Calvin favored congregational singing and rejected anything elaborate. He insisted that only biblical texts should be sung in church, and he favored metrical psalms. Metric rhymed strophic translation of psalms in the vernacular. Metrical psalms were published in collections called Psalters, Metrical psalms spread widely, and translations were available in many regions, including New England. Psalm singing was monophonic at first, but psalm tunes were later set polyphonically for devotional use. The Church of England was formed for political reasons under King Henry VIII, 1509-1547. It adopted Protestant doctrines under Edward VI, 1547-1553. English replaced Latin in services, and the Book of Common Prayer was adapted in 1549. The Church blended Catholic and Protestant elements under Elizabeth I, 1558-1603. The leading English composer of sacred music in the 16th century was Thomas Tallis, 1505-1585. The two principal forms of Anglican music were the service, containing music for parts of the liturgy, and the anthem, the English parallel to the motet. William Byrd, 1540-1623, was the leading English composer of the late Renaissance. He wrote secular music and worked under both Protestant and Catholic monarchs. 
Queen Elizabeth protected Byrd for his continued loyalties to the Catholic Church in Protestant England. Byrd composed in all of the Anglican forms of music and was the first English composer to, ap to apply imitative techniques fully. He also composed Latin masses and motets and compiled two books of complete polyphonic mass propers for major days of the church year. Music in the Catholic Church changed during the 16th century primarily in matters of style rather than genre or practice. Flemish composers remained prominent in the generation active between 1520 and 1550, working all over Europe. Catholic composers in this period preserved the style of the preceding generation but expanded the number of voices used primarily duple meter, employed imitative polyphony in a new way, and used canons far less often. Adrian Willert, 1490-1562, strongly affected by the humanist movement, carefully matched text to music. In response to the Protestant Reformation, the Catholic Church initiated a series of reforms called the Counter-Reformation. At the Council of Trent, 1545-1563, to Catholic Church officials reaffirmed doctrines attacked by Luther and Calvin, but sought solutions for addressing abuses. The council eliminated tropes and all but four sequences, but had little else to say about music. Many local Italian bishops insisted that in polyphonic works, the text must always be intelligible, which led many people at the time to believe that the council had issued statements about polyphonic music. Giovanni Pierluigi dal Palestrina, 1525 or 26 to 1594, was the leading Italian composer of church music in the 16th century. He spent most of his career in Rome as a church musician. He was renowned for his masses and motets, but also wrote secular madrigals. A legend circulated after Palestrina's death claiming that his Pope Marcellus Mass saved polyphony in the Catholic Church. Palestrina was respected during his lifetime and became an almost legendary figure after his death. He wrote 104 masses using a variety of techniques from imitation mass, cantus firmus, and paraphrase to freely composed works. His melodies are long breath, rhythmically varied, and easily singable, moving mostly by step in a smooth arch. Palestrina's counterpoint conforms to the teachings of Williard and the writings of Zarlino. Dissonances are restricted to suspensions, passing and neighbor tones, and cambiatas. Palestrina strove to accentuate the words correctly and make them understandable. Palestrina's style has been preserved and imitated for over 400 years. The Catholic Church in Spain was identified with the monarchy and missionaries carried the teachings of the church as well as its music to the Americas. Spanish sacred polyphony was influenced by Franco-Flemish composers at court. Thomas Luis de Victoria, 1548 to 1611, was the most famous Spanish composer of the 16th century, and all of his sacred music is for Catholic services. Victoria wrote imitation masses based on his motets, showing how existing material could be used in new ways. Orlando de Lassus was the last in the long line of 16th century Franco-Flemish composers, and perhaps the most international in terms of his career and his compositions. Whereas Palestrina became a model of the restrained church style of, and of strict counterpoint, Lassus was equally influential as an advocate of text expression even in sacred music. For your 25 question quiz on chapter 9, I would know about the term first practice, see page 183. Know about Monteverdi, Know about the introduction of bar lines to music. See page 184. Know about the importance of soprano and bass texture in the Baroque period. See 185. Know about basso continuo. Know about continuo instruments. See page 185. Know what figured bass is. Know about arios and 
Giulio Caccini, see page 185. Know about concertato ensembles, see page 186. Know about Corelli and Lully, see page 188. Know about intermedi between plays, acts of plays on page 189. Know about pastoral dramas. Know about the relationship between music and, and drama. See 188-189. Know about the Florentine Camerata. See page 189 and 190. Know about Orpheus and Eurydice. See page 191. Know about Jacopo Perry. Know about Monte Monteverdi's Orfeo. Know about Francesca Caccini. See page 195. Know about ballet. Know about opera in Rome, see page 196, and that will do it.